I think he's extremely charming. He's very polite, <clears throat> multi-talented. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm going a, <clears throat> a little bit croaky there. It's the emotion <laughs> of David Williams. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Agony Uncle with me and Uncle Mike here. Uh, you've been sending in your problems over the internet and we are going to now take some of these problems and see whether we can lend a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Mike. We're going to get on with this. Now. Yep. So first up, do you want to read out the first problem? Yes, this is from Matthew. Oh, it's gone all dark suddenly. No, no the screen hasn't I'm changed. having a stroke. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there we are. Matthew McCarthy, if you had to pick one besides being a comedian, in what way has Jack disappointed you the most? If you had to pick one besides being a comedian, in what way has Jack disappointed you the most? First thing I'd say to Mr McCarthy is that your written style is not quite right. <laughs> Because it's a bit gobbled big. Yes, goofy, and he's a little bit of grammar. Yeah. But I can't really be one to judge on that. No. Um, in what way has Jack disappointed How have I disappointed you other than... But that's insinuating that you're disappointed that I'm a comedian. Which I think is something that you're not disappointed in now. No, I mean, I was very disappointed until you started earning a bit of money. And the minute that started, then I thought it was a really good move. But as you know, I always wanted you to get a Goldman Sachs or somewhere and be a banker. Right. But now you're your own banker, so that's fine. So as long as they keep coughing up the it's money... It's not really why I did it. What? That's not really why I'm doing comedy. It's not really why I went into comedy. It's not why I chose it as a vocation, just to earn a load of money. There was a time I remember coming into your bedroom and you got a list of jobs and you were ticking off the ones that made money and the ones that didn't. That's so not And true. I remember seeing comedian. And one. <laughs> no, I didn't. It's a, such a weird scenario. It is quite <laughs> weird. With, particularly with the ticks. With the ticks, <laughs> but the ones yeah. that would make money and not make money. No, the things Theatrical you did. The agent had a big cross next to it. Yeah. No, the things you did in your bedroom are not that kind of thing at all. But anyway, we won't go into any of that. So, this How next have I disappointed you? We haven't oh, asked. sorry, we haven't answered the question. No, you've just been <laughs> sagging me off. <laughs> um, for like a solid three well, minutes. Hasn't, there hasn't been. I mean, there's nothing that has disappointed me about you. That I can't drive, maybe? Yeah. That I don't dress appropriately? No, your dress sense has got much better. If, if this question had been asked a year or two ago, it would have got a different answer. But I think, generally speaking, you're moving forward in the right direction. I mean, I would like you to have a slightly bigger collection of ties, but you never seem to possess a tie. Um, you're never suitably dressed for me to take you to the Garrett Club, which is a disappointment. Mm. Um, have you ever considered that maybe I don't dress properly for the Garrett Club because I don't want to be taken? Yeah. Yes, that's possible. Yeah, and the sort of clubs you go to are very different from the Garrett Club. It's I true. Say. Tiger, Tiger, you don't need to be wearing a tie. No, don't you? I don't. You don't need to be wearing tiger. much to get into Tiger, Tiger. Right. Alan Dawes asks, "When is Jack doing travels with my mother? As yeah. soon as possible. The minute Netflix say that that's what they want, you on the scrap heap." Right. Yes. I'll be straight into the retirement community and me and Mumza mm -hmm. will travel around the world and have a jolly old time of it. Fine. We'll, okay. we'll get you a Netflix account so you can watch it in the Sunning, um, Sunningdale retirement. Why, would, why um, Sunningdale? I don't know, that sort of sounded like a place that all people go and live in. Right. Where would you like to be sent? I would be delighted for you to do a show called Travels with my mother. With your mother? No, with your mother. <laughs> what are you doing a show with my mother? I think that would be a problem. <laughs> She'd be sort of hanging around the crematorium <coughs> for most of the show. Be like show. celebrity haunted. <laughs> um, yes, no, I don't think... Um, no, I think it's a very good idea. Thank you very much. Rachel Bradley asks, out of all the friends Jack has made through showbiz, who is your favourite and who is the worst? 
be very careful when you're answering this, please. And if you say someone that I don't agree with, then you're, it'll be beeped. So. I mean, I like all your people. So who's your favourite? Let's start with my that. favourite person. Yeah, of my friends that I've met in the showbiz world. Um, I'm very fond of that boy, Williams. Robbie uh, Williams. No, he's something like that. Oh. Wi William. 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 I don't know anyone called yes, William. Yes, you do. David. David Walliam. Yes. He's not a boy. No, he's He's three. in his late 40s. Oh, from where I am, that's quite a boy. A boy. I think he's extremely charming. He's very polite. <clears throat> Multi-talented. Mm. Um, sorry, I'm going a, <clears throat> a little bit croaky there. It's the emotion <laughs> of David Walliams. The only person who doesn't like David Williams very much is Michael Morpurgo, who's a children's writer and oh. used to be the number one in the world, and his position is slipping thanks to David Williams. Rivalries. Yeah, so don't oh, yeah. mention his name to Michael Well, Morpurgo. I imagine that's the kind of beef that everyone will be talking about on YouTube, the, uh, the children's author beef between Michael Morpurgo and uh, David well, Williams. Well, might be. You never know. Could be. But so yes, so David Williams, I think, is one of your better friends. And the least? Least. Um, I'm not that keen on that um, comedian, that, uh, that one, oh, what's he called? He's got a slightly odd look about him. Wears very tight shirts and stuff, and has got a slightly wonky face. Um, sort of slightly dodgy okay, mouth. I know exactly who you're talking about. Eyes. That's not. I, you don't yeah. need to remember his name. Yeah, that one. I know who you mean. Yeah. I'm not that mad about him. Put your guesses in the comment section <clears throat> below. Shall I read the next yeah. one? This is from Abby Taylor. Has Winston been written into the will yet? And will he be getting more money than Jack? No. The answer, Abby, is that. I haven't actually got a will, I don't think. What? I don't think so. Well, then how? Who oh, no, maybe I have. You must have to I have don't remember what's in it, though. Really? I think I've left all my money to... I don't know. Don't be one of these... Oh, no, I've left all my money to Mummy. She gets it all. So she can then decide. She can do what she likes, and she's very fond of Winston, so you never know. So, Abby, it's up to Mrs Whitehall. That sort of decision. Samantha Charlton asks, Hilary, Daddy and Winston, would you all together do travels without Jack? Um, I think it would depend on the money, really, Samantha. I mean, if Netflix were prepared to produce a shed load of money, I think I'd be prepared to let you go. Just, we just have to play that by ear. Donna Lou. How does your mum cope with you and your dad so well? Well, that's a question you'd have to ask Mrs. Whitehall, who sadly isn't here. Um, she's, I don't know where she is. Saintly, a saintly a woman. Saintly. With the patience of a saint. She is. She's a wonderful woman, Mrs. Whitehall. Incredible. I mean, I, I don't know what I'd do without her. I mean, I wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. Why does she help me out of bed? Very often she does. Sometimes I'm quite exhausted at the end of a long night with your mother, for obvious reasons. But, Not uh, obvious reasons. Um, right, let's do the next one. Claire Hen Hendy asks, what is the strangest thing Jack has ever done or said? Strangest thing I've ever done. Strangest thing? Yeah. You didn't like it when I did Celebrity Juice. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. <laughs> I always remember that. I was coming back from a gig in Milton Keynes and I was on the side of the road. And I don't know why. I was waiting for a car and it wasn't coming. And you called me up and I was stood in a lay-by in Milton Keynes and you went, that is the most ghastly show I've ever seen. You should sack your agent. It was horrendous, that horrible little ginger man. And then you went on and on and on. I was very upset. Who was the horrible ginger man? Keith Lemon. Oh, yes. 
very oh, funny, yes, very popular, that. very successful show. Obviously, oh, quite strange. Awful, wasn't it? It's because you did so many of those quite dodgy shows in your early days. Mm. But then I suppose you were desperate, you'd do anything. It's like that time you went to that pub in Tooting. I mean, what was that all about? And that was so embarrassing. You're starting out. That's what you do when you start out. Come on, there was more to it. You were caught in a field at school in the news that's a separate incident. by the headmaster's Se wife that's a separate incident who You're was walking her dog that, that was and enough. you jumped out from behind a hedge in the news you made that you did that is a complete fabrication of what no. that story was 